Well, for today's video, I'm going to uh, show you how I sharpen my tools for the lathe. I'm going to go through what equipment I'm using, what you might need, what you might not need. Um, and I'll show you how to sharpen some of the basic tools that we use fairly steady. Um, first of all, you need a grinder. Um, and, and I run my grinder on a pretty low speed. As low as it'll go, as a matter of fact. Um, and, and I use a really fine stone, which I'm going to show you how to dress that stone and, and keep it flat. Because after a while, it starts to run grooves in it. And then it's not sharpening properly. So I'll show you how to do that. And this is a, this is a must. You need something like this. You can buy this. Um, I made it. It's just a piece, two pieces of square stock, one smaller than the other. That um, one slides into the other. Um, And I, what I did is I, I welded a nut, a double nut actually, on this. And then I have a knob that I can use to tighten and loosen so that this goes where I want it to go. Um, so this is nothing but a, but a piece of angle iron that I cut and kind of put it on an angle. And you'll see when, later on that the tools actually rest in here like this and it allows you to rotate the tool as you're um, grinding them so that's pretty simple two size uh, square stock um, one goes inside the other um, if you have access to welding or brazen you could braze it too um, I just Raised a, I welded a couple of nuts on there. Um, drill a hole through this. Um, put the nuts over top of it and weld it. So that. I mount underneath the wheel. Directly underneath it. Um, I just clamp it. In place. Because obviously you can't drill a hole and put it down through there. Then you wouldn't be able to slide this in and out. Um. So for dressing it, they make a stone that's made for dressing grinding wheels. And all you got to do really is you turn the grinder on and uh, you hold this squarely against the wheel. And as you can see, that whiten that wheel right up. Um, so now this is nice and flat. And, and you need to do that fairly often. Um, you want to keep that thing from getting grooves in it. Um, so some of your common tools. Uh, this is a bowl gouge. It's a normal bowl gouge. This is a modified angle bowl gouge. This is the tool I use the most of any tool I own. I use this. Um, this is a parting tool. So when you go in and you're finished with a project and, and you need to cut the project off, you come straight in with that. So that's, that's a parting tool. Here's a couple of different kinds of scrapers. This one has a curved edge. It's pretty much worn out. It started out a lot bigger than that, but um, over the years I've ground her down. This is just a straight one. They're, they come in all different sizes. The concept for um, sharpening them is pretty much the same though. And, and this is a spindle gouge. This is made for um, not making a bowl, but if you put a piece on the lathe Lengthwise like this. It's made for roughing that out. You can't use it on a bowl. It won't work um, The grain is wrong, but This is not something I use a lot of because I don't do a lot of that, but I do use it some um, 
So the whole idea of this setup here is that you lay your tool in there and you bring it back until it, it lays on here at the right angle. Let me see if I can show you that. This, um, you can move this back and forth until you get the right angle of what that is. Then you tighten it down. And with that, you turn your you turn your grinder on. Now again, this is a bowl gouge. Turn your grinder on, and, and I like it on low speed. And basically, you just set your tool on there after this is adjusted. And you just stick it on there and rotate it. Now you can see where it's, it's taking the new stuff. Just keep rotating it. And there you have it. That's a sharpened uh, bowl gouge. Um, and, and you can see that it heats it up a little bit, which is why I like to keep the wheel slower than normal. Um, it would heat up even more if it was if it was sped up all the way um, so that's a bowl gouge then a scraper again you're laying the tool in that part there and we'll let this thing calm down here and you want to lay this adjust this until it it shows the same angle as this right here so you just lay that on there like that when you get the right angle tighten this down it should be the same angle both sides if it's not you'll make it that way um. and what I do is I place it on there Flip it over, same thing. And you have a nice sharp edge. And when you're grinding anything, when, when you come to the edge of that grind, where you're coming right to a point, um, you can see the sparks, little tiny sparks, actually coming up on, on the top here. Let me see if I can show you that. When them sparks come up on the top like that, coming up into here, that means that you've reached a point. If you're off slightly on the angle, it's, it's probably not going to make that much difference. But you want it to be consistent side to side. Um, and, and if you don't see them little tiny sparks coming up on the top, you probably haven't reached a point yet. In other words, you've got to keep grinding. Again, another different style of scraper again you lay it in there and you bring it until you got the right angle tighten it down And you just lay it on there and you rotate it. And that gives you your round. You get you could end up with burrs on the top here, but you don't need to worry about that. They're fine. Leave them right on there. And again, same concept with a spindle gouge.
just adjust that until you have the same angle as that cut, which was pretty close to the last one. And again, start it on one side. As you can see, I haven't quite got it to the point yet. So it needs a little bit more. So there's a nice grind. It's all the way, even all the way around. And again, if it's got some burrs here, which this does, that's fine. Leave them on there. The next is the parting tool, and it's the same exact concept. It's really not hard to sharpen these tools. There, there's a couple exceptions, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But with a parting tool, again, you want to get it on there so that this angle is running with the wheel. See how it's running with it? Tighten it down, and this, all you got to do is drop this on the wheel, flip it over, and drop it again. Let me get you closer. I want to show you them sparks that you see at the top. You see if this, uh, see them little tiny sparks up there? That tells you that you've reached your point. And there you have it. That's, that's all there is to sharpening that. Now there's one more tool in the arsenal here that we got to have. Um, and and, and this, th this holds a tool in place. Um, and the, this is the modified bowl gouge. And in order to sharpen this, I can't lay this in there like the rest of the tools. That won't work. Let me show you. If I lay this in here, even if I get that angle right there, I can't hit. It doesn't hit here. And there's nothing I can do to make it hit there. That's why we have to have the second setup here. This I bought. You put the tool in here, and in this particular knife, I'm measuring two and a half inches to the point. From there to the point, two and a half inches. And I tighten it down so it's overhanging two and a half inches from here. Then I put this part, this into this socket here. And I line up this angle, and I, I'm not sure what that angle is, but I think it's somewhere around 40, 45 degrees. I don't think it matters exactly if it's right. Um, but as you can see, I, I think it, it looks pretty close to a 45 degree angle. <clears throat> Put that in so that this angle now lines up like this. <clears throat> tighten this down and now I'm pivoting on this so you can see it comes around like this and around like this and that's how you get that modified um, I put it in here and it goes around like this and like this and that's how I get that modified angle on there
and that gives you that grind for that modified bowl gouge. So you can make this or you can buy it, but if you're going to do this, you're going to have to buy this thing. I suppose you could make it, but um, I just bought it. So there's a lot more different kinds of um, uh, knives, um, and, and you'll get into if you're doing pens and small things like that. Um, you're working with a lot smaller knives. Um, but that gives you the gist of the idea. Most of the knives can be sharpened simply with this. If you try to freehand it, it's no good. You're never going to keep it straight. You need to put it in there and just pivot the knife or slide it back and forth, how, whatever it calls for. Um, so this is a must. A grinder is a must, and a good fine um, grinding wheel is a must. Um, some people use metal ones, that's fine. Um, they're diamond coated and they work good. I just happen to have this, which is just a fine blade, fine uh, wheel. Um, so that's about it. That should, uh, that should cover most of the different types of knives. And, and I think for the most part, most of the knives, it's the same kind of concept. So you can see this, this rest thing here, right here, this, this is a necessity. This you have to have. Um, so cool. I should give you an idea how to do it. Let's see what the lake looks like today. It's hard to believe we're getting algae in this lake as early in the year as this. It's only the first week in April. Yeah, I know it's spoiled with the other houses on the lake, but in the summer, believe it or not, with the leaves on, it's pretty private here. I don't really have to see a whole lot um, once the leaves are on. But that'll be a few more weeks before that happens. Thanks for watching.